I want to go back to to the debate though, because I kind of was pulling that thread a second. What did you think? I thought Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, as a guy, I said I kind of cringed a little when he went after Nikki Haley, right? And I was like, he's talking about the size of her heels and her daughter, and I was like. I get the point that you're making, Vivek, but like the, it just comes, this is probably not endearing you to a lot of female voters, but you are a female voter, so I want to ask you. Yeah, but I'm not like the typical female voter, you know? I cut my teeth, <laughs> on, I cut my teeth at a law firm where I, I was a young woman with all men, and I've heard and seen a lot worse. Um, locker room talk is, <laughs> is <laughs> nothing to me. But for me, I thought um, all's fair in love and war, and this is war. I liked what he said. I think he's quippy. I'm certainly not voting for him. Uh, certainly not an endorsement. But I thought when he, you know, when he said Dick Cheney and heels, those are the sound bites that you get that make news. And I think he was trying to make news, and it worked. And when he talked, that's, about and that's that's the thing that I find interesting. You're right. He made news. He was once again the talk of the internet, and and frankly, the morning shows. But it was funny because I I had gotten a lot of texts from from women that were just like, oh, dude, that was just a little too much. And I get it. They're most conservative women aren't the sort of the feminazi sexist you know all worried about their pronouns but i no. think they were like dude you you could have gone after her on p policy but you're making it gender specific by t attacking certain things uh, i mean i certainly understand the argument although i don't agree with it and here's the thing haley went after him about being on tiktok and what he said like basically what he said was fair. If you're so worried about what I'm doing, clean up your own house. Like, But, but here's the, the difference is I get like, look, w I've been very clear. I have a problem with TikTok. I'm not on it. My kids aren't on it, but my kids are minors, right? I can control it on, what's on their phones. I can tell them. Nikki Haley's daughter, and I'm not defending this because I no. actually, I, but I'm saying that there's a difference between a minor child who you have a right to say, here's here's a phone that I am bequeathing you, I am your yeah. adult guardian, and a 25-year-old woman, which is what Nikki's daughter is. And I yeah. kind of was like, there's a little difference to say, well, you should be able to tell your 25-year-old daughter what to do and what to have on her phone. I think that it should be, like, I would love to see parents make that case. I think they should be to all their kids, regardless of how old they are. But my point is, it was a little bit of a cheap shot because it made it sound like, you know, your daughter's on TikTok. Well, she's 25. She's going to do what she wants to do, whether her mother tells her to or not. Yeah, I think that's fair also. But, you know, he's an adult too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, but, and I, I, but I look, I, yeah. I think that like the idea that he's on TikTok is inexcusable. You can't tell me that you are tough on China, that you're concerned about the national security threat that they pose, the intellectual property that they steal, and then say, but I'm going to go on TikTok where that's exactly what they do. But, but the problem is, is young Republican kids are on TikTok. And if he wants I, to be that young voter, he, here's what I would do if I were him. I am going to use this to my advantage to get votes. And then the minute I win, I'm going to shut it down. Yeah, but I also, he, I, I get that, but that is, you. Can, it's sort of like, how do you talk about, I, it's such a transactional thing. That's the Biden campaign. They're saying, uh, yes, TikTok's bad. We're banning it on government phones. It's illegal to use in the military and national security, but then we're going to campaign on it. What signal does that send to a young person who you're trying to say, yes, it's very dangerous. Let me tell you how bad it is, but I'm going to communicate with it. I'm going to communicate by it on you. I just, to me, I, you can't, if you're a young person, you're like, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's politically expedient, but you can do it and I can't. I mean, I I, I get why. Well, it's right a tool. now, I would say everyone, like, you know, when I get in, it'll be gone. I'm gonna like then you guys will understand. You know what? I am not a fan of Chris Christie. However, um, I thought that he had a really cogent point on TikTok. He said the Chinese Communist Party doesn't have Instagram or Facebook or X. Right. Why are we allowing their platforms? And on the left, they're all saying free speech, free speech, but got to go back to something. This isn't really about free speech. This is a Chinese Communist Party spying app and they don't allow ours there. So why should we allow theirs here? I, I agree. And that's, again, I, I, mean, like there that is, point. I, I love, I mean, I thought there were so many good points. They, they, not that, not just that, but the version of TikTok that they have in China oh, yeah, is completely. different than the version they have here. I mean, this is such, there are so many separate issues to, to pull down uh, and discuss. And yet I, again, I, I'm, I'm actually intrigued. It shows you at the beginning of this Congress, actually probably a little before, there was so much agreement that we had to ban it, we had to do it. And then you saw the lobbyists and the really? money. And I couldn't believe how many ads TikTok was running during the debate. I mean, these guys get it, which is, all right, politicians, you want to ban us? 
we'll, we'll, we'll use our platform to go after you. We'll help. We'll have our lobbyists. I mean, this is so Washington. It's unbelievable to me. Yeah. This is a black and white issue. It's bad for our country. It's a threat to national security. We shouldn't even be debating this thing. And yet these politicians, they're on it. They're not doing anything about it because the system, the, the swamp, as Trump would like to say, is winning. Yeah. I mean, I think that's all extremely valid. You even saw that when all of the um, Sam Bankman Freed stuff was coming out. Of course, he was funding Democrats, but basically, when they were thinking about regulating crypto, he was like, okay, everybody, here's, you know, we're lining your pockets. And then everyone's like, oh, crypto is great. Let's just let it do its own thing. And we saw that so, talked to a few Republicans too and donated to a few Republicans too. Uh, yeah, it, exactly. It was like, I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen. But, at the end of next week, seven days from today, the government's going to run out of funding again. We got this new oh. speaker, Mike Johnson, who came in. He has all these things. There's not, they, they actually, the Republicans had to pull two of the appropriations bills this week that they couldn't move forward. So that was, you know, that was always the, the plan. We want to move these one at a time. We want to do this and jam the Senate. They haven't done anything. And so they're out of session today because it's a Veterans Day observed. They're going to come back Monday and have five days before the next shutdown happens. And I, I feel like this is Groundhog Day where we're just gonna keep kicking the can down the road. Now, I'm actually a somewhat of a fan of the CRs in the sense that they actually cut spending because they keep it at levels that are below the, the new ones so that Washington can't add, add in new money. And so I, as much as it hate, kills me that this is how we're doing business, if it ensures that we don't spend additional money, I'm for it. And I think that's that's the only upside right now. But I feel like everybody wanted to rearrange the chairs on the deck of the Titanic and say, okay, we got a new speaker, we're gonna do this. And yet they don't realize the ship still sinks. And yeah, that's what's gonna happen next Friday. I, I mean, I think I look th at this through the lens of the average American who doesn't maybe understand how this works in Washington. Where is all of this money going? We have an open border. Gas is still extremely expensive. The grocery store is completely unaffordable. Why are we spending all this money and none of our lives are getting any better? Right. Like, and, and the bureaucracy in Washington is so bloated and it's just really hard to watch. And it's almost makes you feel helpless. Like there's nothing we can do about it. Right. So that's just where I feel. I mean, I know that's maybe not the answer you're looking for, but it's just really disheartening to see these people spending our money, hand over fist, sending it to all of these countries overseas. I'm not even talking about the wars. I'm just talking about, you know, I saw something online the other day. We're sending X million dollars overseas to fund LBGTQIA initiatives. Like, what? But that's the thing that, and I ask this every time a member of Congress comes on, right? I there are big entitlement programs that need to get reformed if we really want to address the debt and the deficit. Okay, I get that. Yeah. I was I, I served on the budget committee for three years as the spokesman in, in on the House side. Yeah. But at the end of the day, these low hanging pieces of fruit that the, pro, the the grant that you're just talking about, the funding for this and that that like every Republican should be like, okay, like I'm against that. Why is that? It's it blows my mind. They control the House. The Constitution gives it the power to originate spending. And yet they all shake their head and say, you know, you're right. It is a shame. And I'm like, but you're the guy or the girl with the vote. Why are you guys sitting back saying, we're just going to let this keep happening. And the right. one thing I, 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 these I bills now, right. They're so big and there's so much pork, right. In these pieces of legislation. And you don't even, if it's, they should start itemizing these things, you know, for the average uh, American citizen. But the problem is, is let's say you don't want to pass X in that bill, and then they'll throw in, well, for your home state, your wife runs yes. the library, Joe Manchin, maybe we just throw a little funding for the library in West Virginia. So it's basically Washington is the most corrupt place on earth. It, it, our founders would be rolling over in their graves the way that this is running, and we shouldn't have career politicians and all of these special interests. It sort of makes you really upset when you see when you start to peel back the layers of the onion, you really do cry and not just because right. it's an onion. I, yeah, I agree.